Good morning, afternoon, or evening. This is Brandon here, the Ockagen Hunter on Poseidon's Skillet. I can see in the background, um, I am at the beautiful Aha Beach location, nor located in uh, Kunigami, which is in northern Okinawa. What I wanted to do is to go ahead and do a full-length setup of how uh, I set up my kayak. So, you can see I just put the load assist on the rear of that kayak and I'm using that kayak loader made by Eno to bring that kayak down. Um, what I'll do next is I'll go ahead and take the tires and pop them in and then I have some bungees that I'll wrap around the Bixby mount to kind of hold it in place. Now the GoPro is actually on the Yak Attack Boom and I really like this boom because it's longer um, when I'm doing the super view on the GoPro. I can get the entire kayak from bow to stern including the spanker cell. Now these wheels, um, I've only used them two, three times and I have mixed feelings about them. I like them. I do think that they are difficult to get on while I am still in the water and I'm not looking forward to when it is much colder out and trying to get those wheels on in the water. Um, I do not think that these wheels will be practical to try and um, get on once the kayak has uh, uh, is completely loaded and just on the beach. So I do like the fact that I'm able to take these wheels uh, off so easily just by unplugging the bungee, or taking off the bungee, and then uh, lifting. Um, you noticed there, I actually uh, picked up the kayak from the H-rails there on the side. Now, those H-rails are actually the Pro Angular 14 rails. Um, there are three contact points in the front, back, and then there in the middle. And then those are the right, long so. bolt locations uh, for the HRL Deluxe and I'm pretty confident that those are going to hold over time. Um, I have uh, rocked those HRLs back and forth and um, they seem pretty sturdy. Now I go ahead and I put the uh, AMA outriggers off to the side so that when I'm setting up the kayak I don't have to go ahead and step around them. Um, but my car being so small uh, they sit on top and they kind of get in the way so I just have to go ahead and get them out of the way. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to put on, again because it's long and in the way in the car, is the spanker cell. Um, it's made out of uh, mostly aluminum. Um, it was a DIY project. If you haven't seen the video on that, go back and look. Um, I absolutely love using this for the jigging. Um, if you notice, uh, especially in this video towards the end, um, there's a great shot uh, right before I catch the tom on where I'm not facing the wind and um, I, I drop, my, drop my jig and I don't even worry about uh, the rudder and my kayak automatically turns into the wind. Um, I correct the rudder to the forward position once and that's it. And uh, typically with jigging, um, that's all that I have to do. Now, you just noticed that those uh, aluminum rails, they just kind of pop into place. They're actually held in by bungee. And then what I'm doing now is I have a uh, paracord uh, on the cam lock there on the left side of the kayak and I'm connecting that to a snap swivel um, and that is for my up and down for the actual spanker cell. Um, this, uh, this seat, I absolutely love it. Um, it is nice and wide. I will say that it is nowhere near as comfortable as what I'm used to. Um, which is going to sound odd, but um, the Perception Pilot, uh, my previous kayak, that, that was, for some reason, that was just a much more comfortable seat. Now, I'm sure that given time, um, softening up that seat hopefully will help. Um, I have ordered a, a cushion for it, um, just because I, I do get uncomfortable um, after four or five hours in that seat. Um, so I don't, uh, so the cooler box that you notice in the background, um, that's actually a new cooler box. I got rid of my uh, Yeti 65 
and um, it was just too big. Um, I got tired of carrying that up and down the beach, and everyone I know was like, that cooler's too big, that cooler's too big. Um, so I went ahead and settled for um, a uh, Japanese-made uh, Shimano cooler, which, which has worked out very well. Um, it's called the uh, Spaza Well. It is a 40-some liter um, cooler box, and, and it actually works pretty well. Um, now you can notice that the uh, Bixby um, it is being connected right now by a quick connector, and um, again, I've, I've made a video for that as well, so you can find that. Um, the battery, I let sit right behind my seat, and um, I actually connect the magnetic pull, uh, kill switch to the H-rail. Um, and the reason for that, because if I were to ever roll or there is a large movement of the kayak, um, maybe me falling off, um, if the motor were running, which I doubt, um, there, that should be enough mo uh, motion to actually uh, disconnect the magnet from the battery itself. Um, I'm connecting the uh, steering lines right now. Those steering lines are connected directly to the uh, Hobie uh, steering mechanism there in the back, that, that uh, round thing, and, uh, and, it, and it works extremely well. Um, my Hobie up and down, you can see I'm going to pull that now. And that is the stowed position, and again, that is another uh, cam lock. So both of those cam locks, the one for the uh, Bixby and for the Spanker cell, they are exactly the same. They are the uh, Harkin mi Micro cam locks. Um, and then the ones that I could find to ship here to Okinawa were um, much more expensive than just, just the cam lock itself. Um, so here's the jigs that I'm using. Those are the big jigs. I never used them. Um, front and back. You can see that I love the silver and, and glow on that one. And then the smaller jigs are, are coming up. Um, I keep my lures in there as well. Um, now going off subjects. Now I used to keep these jigs in the sides of the kayak in the H-Rail Deluxe area and um, I, I realized that that was actually tilting my kayak to, to a large degree. And so I started putting them underneath the seat and I noticed that I get a lot less uh, tilt um, from the jigs being being on the side. Um, so going back to the cam locks. Uh, so yeah, those cam locks, they are three piece. They come with a base, uh, the cam lock itself, and then a uh, stainless, I don't, I don't know what it's called, but it's like a guide um, that, the, that the line can rub against. And uh, those are very sturdy. Um, I'm, I'm really liking the, the choice of that. Now these uh, H-Rail adjustable rod holders, um, absolutely love them. And the reason for the uh, PA-14 H-Rails was actually for this um, back part here so I could put these H-Rail rod holders uh, much further back because when I'm casting or I'm just moving around my kayak, um, I didn't want um, the rods being right up next to me. I like to have a little bit of room. Um, I don't like the molded in rod holders uh, because it puts the rods at an angle and especially that uh, the one on the right hand side. Um, that's on the side that I cast on. Um, in the past, I've actually uh, caught up on on it um, when I'm trying to to cast, and uh, it's only happened once. But um, I just have to be very very mindful when those rods are out there at an angle. So by using these uh, H rail rod holders, I'm able to keep them straight up and down. Now, I typically do not uh, take these rod holders off and on. Um, I had actually taken them off because uh, there was a typhoon. Uh, last weekend or the or the week before and so I had removed them to, to bring the kayak inside for for storage and I went and rot, rinsed them off really well and um, they seem to be holding up just fine um, so I do have the four rod holders um, I use only three for the rods and then uh, on the left hand side I use um, I use one of them for the nets now on the days that I bring the electric as well, so I have four rods. Um, I actually use that molded in rod holder for the net then. Um, the other thing that I like about having those rod holders so far back is I took out the bottom pins um, that hold the rods up and because the butts of my rods are so long, they actually can go down into the kayak into that uh, H-Rail Deluxe area and the reels can actually sit comfortably where they are supposed to be in the grooves on the cutout on the top and they don't um, spin around or um, rock back and forth. Um, I, I really like, like those rod holders. Um, 
Now the next thing I'm going to set up is actually the uh, FPV 17.5 amp hour uh, battery. Um, that is the mast mount clips in there. Um, that's connected to the, uh, I believe it's called Yak Power uh, Control uh, System. And I, and I really like that um, system so far because I can connect the battery and then um, I can leave the entire system off so that it doesn't drain the battery. And so I'm, I'm connecting my, uh, well actually the, the, the baggie. So um, the, the plugs, the wires on the kayak, I keep rubber uh, caps on them and then I actually keep the uh, caps uh, wires inside of that plastic bag to try to help keep the uh, weather off of them. And then I also keep the plastic caps on the back of the fish finder. Um, and then both of those, the, both the plugs and the caps, they get fresh uh, dye electric grease on a regular basis. Um, so I'm going to go to connect and then I'll, I'll test the, uh, the battery. Um, now while I'm talking about, uh, while I'm waiting for that, um, notice in the background um, the launch. Uh, this is a very steep launch and um, it's, uh, it gets deep fairly quick right there uh, where you see the brakes. Um, when I say deep, uh, you, you can't stand in the water. Um, it's, I mean, you can, but you're up to your shoulders. It gets to about uh, 1.5 to 2 meters, um, just a few steps there into the water. So it's, it's pretty difficult to, to launch here. Um, so there is the uh, Bixby uh, control. Um, that's actually on a universal uh, mount for the HRL. And that's the only thing that I, I actually keep there to the front left of me. Um, so there, I, you can see I just connected the uh, the H the uh, not the HRL the uh, the magnet retainer or the the kill switch. Um, I'm going to blow up the uh, AMA outriggers and and connect those. And ultimately, uh, that is the uh, setup of my kayak Poseidon skillet. Um, here in a moment, I will go ahead and uh, put the uh, front uh, bucket in. Uh, that I actually use to keep a smaller cooler with uh, food and snacks in um, with a frozen bottle of water um, and then I'll drop the uh, the tray there in the middle that I usually keep the the first aid kit and, uh, extra extra line and um, some of my uh, tools that I, I don't want to rust um, GoPros, extra batteries, uh, things like that So I think the entire setup of this was uh, just under 20 minutes. I think it was, um, I'm, I'm not sure how long, but you can look at the time and you can see. So my overall impression of this kayak, I, I do absolutely love it. Um, it's, it's incredibly stable. Um, you can see that there are some good swells uh, today. Um, when I'm fishing and I'm not really paying attention to the water and, and I should be um, in fact if, if you see the seawall there on the on the right you can see those swells crashing up into them and they're, they're going they're coming up a little bit um, so yeah there's there's the front hatch liner um, and then I, I keep that square drop-in bucket for the middle inside of that hatch liner it saves a little bit of space in, in transport I keep my uh, bobbin tools for the PR knots and stuff in there. Um, that thing you just saw me holding was actually a USB light that I can connect to my, my battery pack. And then I actually put that on my GoPro mount um, where my GoPro is recording now. And so when I'm heading out first thing in the morning, I can turn that USB light on to the front of the uh, kayak. And that's my light heading out or for a setup in the morning. So yeah, uh, uh, going back to this uh, kayak, I, I do really like it. It's it's a lot lighter than than I would have expected. Um, quality wise, I absolutely love it. Um, obviously, being in Okinawa, Japan, where we don't have an authorized Toby dealer, um, our closest one is in Tokyo. And uh, if I were to have any issues, then um, uh, you know I'm I'm it's, it's concerning. 
um, with all of the issues with the 2019. Um, I really hope I'm not going to have an issue with the, the 2020. Um, I don't suspect I will. Um, so right now you can see I'm just actually just testing the the spanker. Uh, there's something wrong. I think that that top clip needs to be spun around. Yeah, it was it was on backwards. So um, actually, on the way out, I I had actually wrapped this um, up because the the wind was uh, pretty strong, and so. Um, that blue coil cord, I had actually uh, put the spanker cell in the stowage position, and then when I got to my first point, I uh, crawled to the back of the kayak and, and set it up. Um, so yeah, you can see that I just turned on the, the main power, and then a uh, fish finder just sh uh, shoots right up. Now, the fish finder is the uh, Elite 2 uh, TI-9. Um, it has the 3-in-1 uh, transducer on the uh, Guardian mount down below. Now, the uh, only other thing that I have not mentioned, and I'm really uh, bad about mentioning this, is the rudder is actually an upgraded rudder. It's um, made by uh, Albert Wong out of Hawaii, and uh, I never had a chance to use the stock rudder, um, but uh, as I told my buddy Linnell, um, I didn't want the opportunity to. Uh, I, I actually had all of these parts ordered, installed, um, before my maiden voyage and um, I, 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 I wanted a fully functioning how I wanted it to kayak from day one and I can honestly say other than moving the rod holders around a little bit and um, adjusting the um, angle of the fish finder I think that's that's really about the only adjustments that I've made to the kayak other than that it's I absolutely love the layout, I love the storage, um, everything about it. Um, so that is uh, Poseidon Skillet, that is my full setup. Um, so yeah, I believe that that was actually just under 18 minutes. So as always, uh, thank you for watching and tight lines, be safe.